Behold the best way to play Zone of the Enders 2. In this video, I'll break down the pros and cons of emulating the PS2 version versus playing the PC remaster. If you're interested in emulation, I'll cover my recommended settings, an HD texture pack option, and my personal reshade setup. If you prefer the PC remaster, I'll go over common bugs and fixes, how to inject RTGI ray trace lighting, and my custom reshade configuration. Lastly, I'll wrap it up by comparing all the options side by side for your viewing pleasure. Now, I'm not claiming either is the definitive way to play, despite explicitly saying this in my clickbait title. Gotcha, b****! <laughs> Jokes aside, my reshade setups reflect my personal taste. You will definitely want to tweak to your liking, but this is the beauty of emulation in PC gaming. You can fine tune everything to match your preferences. So, take it all with a grain of salt, use what you like, and disregard what you don't. If you want to support the channel, hit the like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell, check out my barely functioning Patreon, or drop a comment below. I say these things in the name of Miyamoto, the Father, Kojima, the Son, and Carmack, the Holy Ghost. Amen, and enjoy the video. Most people will probably prefer playing the PC remaster because the remaster features entirely reworked new handcrafted textures, improved lighting, enhanced particle effects, and a stable 60 FPS. Compare that to emulating, in PCSX2 you can increase the resolution to 4K. There's also an HD texture pack by CurseArms, which is pretty good, but since it's an AI upscale of the original assets, it's not as clean as the manually redone textures in the Mars edition. For example, in this shot, the original version shows unreadable text on Jehuti's frame. The PS2 upscale pack doesn't really fix it, but in the Mars remaster, the text is fully legible. If you want to service this b use the designated fastener! Anyway, performance-wise in PCSX2, you can achieve a fairly stable 60 FPS via tweaking settings in the emulator, but you're still going to experience a lot of slowdown. Compared that to the PC version, in my experience, it maintained a rock-solid 60 FPS. In terms of audio, the Mars Edition adds remastered surround sound, updated sound effects, and a fully remixed soundtrack. The trade-off is that this game is finicky with your computer audio settings. And it takes a few tweaks to get everything working correctly. So, unless you strongly dislike the new sound effects or can't stand the remixed soundtrack, the PC version is superior here as well. In regards to extras, the Mars Edition includes a 3D hangar view, model viewer, full VR support, and a new, very easy difficulty mode. It also has an optional pro controller profile that to me does play better. However, you can remap the controls in PCSX2 to mimic this layout, but you obviously don't get any of the other extras when you emulate the original version. In terms of reshade, reshade integration does work far better on the PC version because the depth buffer functions properly, which allows depth-based effects like RTGI lighting. On the PS2 emulator, I couldn't get the depth buffer to work reliably, so none of those effects will work. In conclusion, unless you are hell-bent on mimicking the original experience in which I would just say emulate at native resolution and throw a good CRT filter over it, Outside of that, the only real advantage, in my opinion, to emulating on the PS2 is that with 8K super sampling, you can achieve, ironically, a slightly crispier image compared to the PC remaster. However, the remaster's superior textures, stable 60 FPS, remastered audio, and all the extras make the Mars Edition my preferred way to play. That said, if you do want to go the emulation route, I'll go over my PCSX2 settings next. If you've never used PCSX2, on my channel I have a video called A Basic Setup Guide for PCSX2, link below. Now, Zone of the Ender 2's native resolution is 512 by 448, which on a modern monitor is going to look pretty pixelated. But before we fix that, let's do some basic settings. Go over to Settings, Emulation, and under EE Cycle Rate, set it to 300% Overclock. 
and I set my normal speed to 110%. Just makes the game stay slightly above 60 FPS. Doesn't really mess up the audio and helps you deal with a little bit of slowdown. Also 300% overclock on EE cycle rate, optimal frame pacing, sync to host refresh rate. And if you don't have G-Sync, check vertical sync and it should get you the smoothest frame rate possible. But as mentioned previously, you will still have a little bit of slowdown. Next, go to graphics. Internal resolution set to the closest interval that matches your monitor's resolution. I have a 4K monitor and a GPU that can handle it. So I go all the way to 8K for super sampling, which gives me the sharpest image possible. However, even at 8K, you can notice, wait a minute, this looks really blurry. Well, that's because PS2 games often use intentional blur as a form of anti-aliasing. To fix this, go back to the display tab under graphics and check anti-blur. Now it's going to look much sharper. The next thing we want to do is the HD textures. Google Zone of the Enders 2 texture pack, which will take you to this GBA temp thread where the author Curse Arms showcases his texture pack. The link for it is in this YouTube video, and then you'll find the actual Google Drive link. I put this link in the description below. Download this, then extract it. <laughs> Inside, you'll find a folder titled SLUS20545. This is the North American version, which you have to be running in order for the texture pack to work. If you don't know what version you're using, go to Settings, Game Properties, and under Serial, it will tell you which version you're using. Take the SLUS20545 folder and put it in Documents, PCSX2 Textures. Head back to your game. Go to settings, graphics, texture replacement, and check load textures. Now we have 4K upscaled textures. The last step is installing Reshade. If you've never used Reshade before, check out my video, how to install Reshade on PCSX2, which will be linked down below. Once that's set up, press home. This will bring up your reshade options. And for this game, I use AMD Fidelity Contrast Adaptive Sharpening. That plus the 8K super sampling gives me a very crisp image. I use levels for a little bit of color correction. I add a slight vignette. Personally, I like it. DPX makes the colors pop a little bit more. And then I use levels plus to crush the blacks for my final image. Now I have a very heavy handed taste when it comes to reshade, obviously you can adjust to your personal preferences. And that's it. This is my personal settings for emulating on PCSX2. Next, we're going to get into fixing issues and my settings for the PC Mars Remastered Edition. Let's do it! All right, first things first in the options menu under graphics. If you have G-Sync, obviously turn off V-Sync. I set my textures to 100%. It's going to give you the highest resolution textures. Fine, fine. Yebis quality is the lighting effects. Normal is the highest. Anti-aliasing, TAAA is the highest. Reflections, SSR is the highest. SSAO, yes, you want that. Cloud effects. The big thing is still photo mode. What this does is a lot of the cutscenes have this crazy blurring effect. If you like that, turn this off. If you don't like that and you want a crispy, clean cutscene, turn still still photo mode on. Motion blur, I'm not a huge fan, but you need a little bit of it. So I set it to medium and I definitely think film grain is a bad look. This game is super sharp and clean. Don't think film grain helps it. And that's it for the basic settings. Now you're gonna notice, as mentioned before, the game has this crazy audio distortion. Check this out. Yeah, that's not gonna fly. If you Google Zone of the Enders 2 sound fix, you're gonna find that this Steam thread, that long story short, says if you change your sound to 24 bit by 48 hertz studio quality, that should fix it. That's also confirmed in the PC Gaming Wiki, and that's also what fixed it for me. In order to do that, you're gonna come down and click on your speaker icon and go to sound settings, choose where your sound is coming out of, and under format, you should have the option 24 bit, 44 8 studio quality. I don't because I use a separate interface. So for me, I have to bring up my Audio Fuse Control Center and I change the sample right here to 4800. Either way, 24-bit, 4800 will fix your sound issues. All right, the only other thing that I'm running is Reshade. Go to reshade.me, download the newest version at the time of recording is 662. Once that's done, hit install. Scroll down, find Zone of the Enders 2 Second Runner Mars, hit next. It is DirectX 10, 11, 12, 
hit next and continue on to install all of the plugins. I've already done it, so I don't need to show you that. Once it's installed, you will not have by default the RTGI plugins that I mentioned previously. To get those, you're gonna go to martysmods.com. You do have to be a patron to get these. It's only five bucks if you want to. You can spend five bucks, be a patron, download the stuff you need, and then cancel. I think it's worth five bucks. I also continue to support him because he makes great stuff. Click on Patreon, you'll get access to his Discord. In the Discord, you're gonna to go to Downloads Level 1, that's the $5 tier, and you're going to download Immerse Pro 2509. This is the newest one at the time of recording. Once that's downloaded, you're going to extract it. You're going to see a folder that says Textures and a folder that says Shaders. In your installation for Zone of the Enders, after you install Reshade, you're going to see a folder called Reshade Shaders. Open that, you're gonna see Shaders and Textures also. You're gonna open Textures, open textures and you're going to drag immerse into here and copy that then you're going to open shaders open shaders and drag immerse into here and copy that once you are done you hit home to bring up your reshade in order to get the depth based stuff to work you need to get the depth buffer detecting properly and this game is very easy click add-ons check draw call number d32 the one that has more draw calls this one says zero this one says about 170 it's kind of moving around check that come back to home search for display depth what this does is it shows you the geometry on the left and your depth on the right what you want to do is adjust it so the things that are closest to you are black and the things that are farther away from you are white the gradient shade is your depth this is set at default if you want to change it and make the depth a little bit different click on edit global preprocessor definitions and this first option reshade depth linearization far plane by default it is at a thousand i leave it at default for this game but you can change it and I'll show you what happens. If I set this to 100 and hit apply, now you see the depth is much more shallow. Everything is white. If you make it too far, like 10,000, then everything is close to black. So I think the default setting of 1,000 is pretty close. But somewhere between 800 to 1,100, I would recommend. You can turn display depth off. The next thing is you have to find Immerse Launchpad. Search that, check it, and move it to the top. This has to be at the top. After that's done, if if you search up here RTGI, you're going to have Diffuse and Specular. Turn on both of those. Now you have your lighting. Now you can adjust these. For this game, the default settings work really well. But just so you know, you can come down to the bottom and you can adjust object thickness. I have it a little bit lower than default. The way that I chose this is come down to Debug View. Change this to Diffuse RTGI. This is going to show you how the lighting looks. If I go to Object Thickness, is you want to go as low as you can without making making the image grayed out. So the lowest possible setting where it still looks right. And for me, that's about 1.65. Anywhere between 165 or 250 is gonna get that correct. And that's all you have to do. Now I also add DPX, which makes the colors pop a little bit. Levels, adaptive sharpen. Look at the difference of this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in and show you the difference. Look at Jehuti's spine and the textures right here. If I click adaptive sharpen, look how much clearer that gets. Off on off on I have the sharpening strength a little bit above default. I boosted up to 1.37. Please adjust this to your personal taste. This is what's awesome about Reshade. Just do it the way that you like it. I also add a little bit of MXAO. It adds a little bit more ambient occlusion. And that's it. That's all I got. Let's do some comparison shots. Comparison shots.